Hey guys! There are so many ways you can organize your life these days, from analog solutions like a bullet journal or a pre-printed planner or just a stack of 3x5 index cards like my grandpa swears by, to an ever-expanding list of digital solutions. There's to-do list apps and note-taking apps and habit-tracking apps, etc. In this overwhelming jumble of options, how are you supposed to find some magical solution that works best for you? This is the question I've been trying to answer for years now. I'm not gonna tell you that I've tried all the options out there, but I have definitely made my way through quite a few of them. And finally, I've put together a system that works really well for me. Now, this is of course an ever-changing system. My needs change, the tools I use change, and the way that the tools I've chosen interact changes over time as well. Today though, I wanna walk you through the exact system that I'm using right now. There are some digital things and some analog things, and that's what's working for me right now because I can't seem to fully commit to either entirely paper or entirely digital. I'll also walk through how I think about personal organization systems so you can build your own. Okay, so first I wanna define what I mean by system. A system is, according to Oxford, a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or an interconnecting network. It is also a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done, an organized framework or method. And when I talk about a personal organization system, I mean a set of standard operating procedures, processes, and tools working together in a predetermined way to deliver the structure and organization I need to actually get things done. A system makes things easier by cutting out the need to make a thousand different decisions every day about everything that comes into your space, whether that's physically or mentally. Instead, you make that decision once and then you just keep that going as you move forward. You already have systems in place for other areas of your life, and these help you know where to put items and where you can find those items again. Personal organization systems are the same thing. You know where to put things that come to mind, like a task, and you have a structure in place so you know where to look for things that you want to review again, like meeting notes or class notes that you took last week. My personal organization system includes several different apps and physical tools like my planner and my iPad, and the system is held together by the routines I always follow. Any sort of organization system will almost certainly look different for each and every person, because we all have different preferences, different things coming into our lives, and different ways that we think about things and thus want them organized. The way I think about systems though, there are three stages that any good system needs to be able to handle. The first part of any organization system is the inputs. By that, I mean anything which I'll call particles because I think of them as like little bits of stuff that comes into your space or your life that you're going to need to handle. Most people's particles will include things like emails, recurring tasks like paying rent or bills, and just other things that come up in day-to-day -day life, like calls you need to make or chores you need to do or anything you need to handle. I don't know, you know what I mean, we all have stuff. The next part of the system is capturing those particles in the space that makes sense for them. For example, you wouldn't list all your calendar events in the notebook that you use for your grocery list. Instead, you just add them to your calendar, whether that's digital or physical. Similarly, it wouldn't make much sense to take all of your meeting or class notes in your Reminders app. Instead, you would do that in a specific note-taking app with everything organized by meeting or class. Next, you've got to execute. Once you've captured all those particles in the space that makes sense for those particles, you have to actually do something with them. Just like the best medicine in the world is useless if you just leave it in the jar or test tube or whatever, the best personal organization system is useless if you just capture things and then don't do anything with those particles. And this ends up being kind of circular because new particles often come up as you're handling previous ones. For example, my husband and I just closed on our first house. Yay! <laughs> We're executing on that part of our plan, but it also means that a lot of new particles are coming in. For example, one of these was that we had to find and submit all of our employment data so that we could get approved for our loan. That task is a new input. So as soon as we learned about it, it went straight through my normal system. It got added to my planner page for that day, which is how I captured that particle. That same day, we both executed on it and had sent in all our information, and that particle was complete to be replaced with a whole avalanche of others. This whole structure of inputs, capture, execute is really just a fancy way of saying stuff comes in, you figure out what to do with it, and then you do that thing. 
but yeah, like that's how stuff gets done. So. Okay, so let me walk you through my system so you get a better idea of what I mean with all this. And just a note here, this is only my personal organization system and is entirely removed from all particles having to do with my work. So you won't see any particles related to my job in here, but you could still set up a system exactly like this for just work things, or if you like, for both personal and work tasks. The inputs to my system include things like physical mail, which may include letters I need to answer, invoices, health insurance information, etc. Email, which of course runs the gamut from vital to utterly useless. Books or articles that I want to read, new projects that I've decided I want to embark on or at least research, ideas for YouTube videos, things around the house that I want to fix or replace or buy, events that I need to respond to and or attend, gift ideas that come to mind for friends and family, and the next steps I need to take on projects I've already started. That sounds like a lot of stuff, but really it's just a fraction of all the inputs and particles that all of us have coming in on a daily basis. Most of these things are already being handled without you thinking too much about it. You don't really overthink the process of grabbing the mail from the mailbox, sorting out the junk mail and tossing it, dividing the stack left by the people who need to handle them, and then triaging them by importance. Then you probably add those things you need to take care of to some list, either mental or physical, and then you do those things. The trick of an organization system is that you're aware of how all of these processes work together and how particles or inputs flow from one step to the next. That sort of flow can be seen here, where the different main types of particles I get are sorted into their appropriate containers, or wherever I've decided to organize them. Let's walk through what these containers are and what role they play in my system. All right, this is a planning channel, so you know I have to start out with my planner. I have a bunch of videos about my planning routines, as well as some about the exact planner that I use, so I'll just link those in the cards and descriptions for you to check out. But here's what you have to know today. Every day, I just write down the things that I need to get done that day. Even small things, like taking my vitamins and what workout I plan to do, go into my planner, as well as things like events, so my planner can also do the work of reminding me I need to show up. My planner is where I look when I think, okay, what am I doing? My planner answers that question. Next up is the Notion list where I house my overall task list. This is a master database that captures all the other things that I need to get done, but aren't necessarily something I'm going to do today, so they don't go in my planner. This database serves as a sort of master repository, and I will add items to this list as I think of them, and then pull items from this list into my planner when I feel I can focus on them. I always view this database in a Kanban board format, and I have it broken down into not started, in progress, and completed. I also have a high priority column, so I know the stuff that I really need to pay attention to, as well as a waiting column for anything I want to keep on my radar, but doesn't need to be front and center. Lastly, I have a long-term column mainly for things I want to learn. Also in Notion is the database that I use to manage this YouTube channel. It keeps everything in one database that I can access from anywhere, which is super convenient. Anything video related goes into this dashboard. So whenever I have a video idea or whenever someone requests a video, I add that to my overall project database. Each item here is also its own card. So within each of these, I have room for B-roll lists, scripts, notes, etc. At the top of the page, I also have a couple widgets, one for tracking how many videos I've posted and another that houses the link to the admin side of my channel. To the right of these are some other pages that I've made and want to keep front and center. Various other long-term lists also live in Notion. I have a couple of these, which you can see in more detail in my Notion walkthrough, which I'll link here and in the description. Basically, anytime I have a list that I know I'm going to want to hang on to for a while, that list goes into Notion and is housed there till I need it. I used to have lists like this in my bullet journal, and honestly, that's one of the biggest reasons I quit bullet journaling. Then I had them living in the Apple Notes app, but that meant I had a ton of notes that I had to go through there, and that was really irritating. I like having one place where I can drop wish lists, baby name ideas, gift ideas for my friends and family, and anything about the upgrades and changes we want to make to our house. Stored in Notion, this information is always available to me, and I don't have to shuffle through a notebook or several to find where I put it. Okay, enough about Notion, let's talk about calendars. I don't use the calendar in my paper planner as my main calendar tool. I use Fantastical as my daily digital calendar. I prefer a digital calendar so my devices can tell me what I'm doing and where I'm going. 
I like that Fantastical has some more useful features than iCal or Google Calendar. If you're interested, I can do a whole video on this app and how I use it, so if that sounds good to you, drop me a comment so I know to make that video. Anyway, all my events are put into Fantastical, as well as some regular reminders, like when trash day is, things like that. By the way, I've also made an entire video on my color coding system for my planner, digital calendar, Notion, and study notes. So if that sounds like your brand of crazy organization, then I will link that one as well. I definitely don't take as many notes now as I did when I was a student, but the need does still occasionally arise. For almost all of my note taking, I use OneNote. In OneNote, I have all my notes from my classes throughout my undergraduate degree. If I were still a student, I'd still be doing most of my work in this app every day, but since I graduated last year, I've still found myself referring to things in here. Whenever I talk about something I learned in my classes, I like to also cite my sources so that the person I'm talking to is coming from the same point of understanding that I am. So that's come in handy, having all of my study materials in this one app, because I can easily find what I want to point people toward. I also made an entire video about OneNote, so if you're not already using that for all of your research and study needs, then I highly recommend it. When talking about OneNote just now, I did say that I use it for almost all of my note taking. I've recently been playing around with Obsidian because it has this cool feature where you can link relevant notes to each other and create this web of information. So far, I haven't done too much here, but I think I'd eventually like to use it when doing personal research into topics that interest me. The idea is to build out each of these topics with sources and research, and then if and when I'm arguing with someone about some of these meatier issues, I can pull up this information and kind of say, this is why I believe what I do, Please send me other data or opinions so I can either flesh out my own information or change my mind about it. Okay, switching gears here to email. Everyone gets email and I think everyone kind of hates it sometimes, but it's a necessary evil, so let's talk about it. Airmail is my email app of choice. Again, I can make a whole video about this app if you're interested, so let me know in the comments. But I have all of my emails hooked into this app and an assortment of folders where I can keep things I may need to access again. It does all the basic stuff you need an email app to do, and it has some cool features that I'm honestly not using to their full extent yet. But here's how it hooks into my personal organization system. Event invitations sent by email are added to my digital calendar. Items that come in that I need to handle eventually are added to the Notion database. Items that need to be handled urgently are also added to my planner as a task. Articles that I want to read are added to my reading list so I can access those on my phone or iPad. Finally, I use Apple Notes for a couple random different inputs because it's native on all my devices and thus super convenient. The first general category is workout templates, notes, and an overall list of this year's workouts. I created a note with general templates for workout sessions so I can just copy paste and know that I'll have a good workout for me. I can also edit these based on what machines or weights are open and what I'm feeling that day, but it at least gives me a good starting point. I also track what I did for each workout so I can see my progress over time. Then I add these individual workout sessions to my overall workout note for that year, which is gratifying because it allows me to look back long term. I started doing this in 2018 when I really started working out. At the end of the year, this huge long note gets moved over to Notion for long term storage. I also use notes to capture random thoughts, and it serves as a sort of inbox. Recently, a friend recommended a book series, so I jotted that down on my phone. Later, I can either add things like that to the appropriate Notion list or to my page in my planner to handle that same day. In this case, I happened to find that book later on my digital library app, so I just checked it out then and there. Notes also keep shared notes with my husband, like our grocery list, so we both have a copy of that that updates live. Apple Notes is super convenient for stuff like this. Even if my husband goes to the grocery store himself, I can be at home updating the list with things that I see were missing in the fridge, and he can just grab them. Based on this diagram, all of this looks like a crazy web. But here's what's crucial, it all functions as a funnel. Things come in through physical mail, email, my brain, life in general. And these are either added to lists to be housed long term, or added into my calendar or my planner list for that day. And then every week, I pull all the events for that week from my digital calendar into my planner. I also pull in the tasks that I'm going to be focusing on that week from my Notion database, as well as from any other lists longer term that I have stored in Notion as well. Every day, I pull these things into my daily list. All this means that I know what I'm seeing on my planner page is everything I have to worry about getting done for that day. 
I don't have to think about checking a hundred different places for that information. It's all right there. I can trust my system because the tools and processes that I've cobbled together means that nothing slips through the cracks. And just a note here, for me personally, if something isn't going to be actionable at some point, it's a foregone conclusion that I'm probably not going to keep it. I don't keep particles that I don't intend to do something with at some point on the line. Okay, now I've showed you my system here so you can see what I've found that's been working pretty well for me. I'm definitely not saying that you should just copy paste this system and it'll work perfectly for you. Because again, everyone's needs are different and your personal organization system should be personal and tailored specifically to you. But that is where the fun part comes in. To create your personal organization system, you get to try a whole bunch of different things. From digital solutions like Notion or Todoist or the Reminders app, to physical things like a pad of paper on your desk or a whiteboard or a planner. I would definitely recommend that if you're just starting to put together your system, you start off by trying things that are either free or very inexpensive. This allows you to get a clearer idea of what you're looking for in your system without breaking the bank. However, if money is not an impediment for you, go ahead and try widely and feel free to send me a check. Now you may already have parts of a system or certain things that you're working with currently that you know work well for you. And that's great. Just pay attention to where there may be gaps between these things and then work to find some way, whether it's a tool or process, to bridge that gap. Make sure your tools work together and try to streamline the entire thing as much as possible so the system does the heavy lifting for you. If you have to work super hard to get your system to function, then it's probably not sustainable for you in the long term. So simplifying and streamlining here is key. I'll drop a list of some free or inexpensive solutions in the description box for you in case you just need a place to start. But just let yourself be free to experiment and find out what works for you. Don't be hard on yourself if something doesn't work. Just make note of why it didn't and take that knowledge forward into your search for something better. Keeping a literal pro and con list for anything you try will help you narrow your focus and will help you find a better solution in future. If you're curious about my torrid history with various paper planning systems, including bullet journaling, I'll link a video I did on that subject in the cards and the description box below for you. Also, please feel free to reach out to me if you have questions about my system or want my input on setting up your own. I genuinely love comments and getting to talk to you guys about nerdy planning stuff, so please let me know if I can help. Okay, that wraps up this video. Please like if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it and want to see more like it, and I'll see you in the next one.